We recently visited Mass Motorsports in Nacogdoches, Texas to pick up our LS3 black label heads for our upcoming build. We received a great shop tour from several members of the Mass Motorsports team. We also had the opportunity to sit down with Horace Mast, the owner of Mast Motorsports, and talk about the history, current state of the business, as well as the recent merger with Endon. Hang on as we go on this wild ride with Mass Motorsports. So where we are now is our dyno test cell, uh, where we dyno test all of our turnkey engine packages. Uh, you know, we're, we're most well known for our LS packages. What we have on the dyno now is our LT package, which is gonna, we're gonna offer a new cylinder head, new camshafts, new complete turnkey engine. We're extremely excited about it. And we can't wait to see the results. Okay, so what we've got here, Jay, is our uh, LT casting. Uh, we're doing a lot of really cool stuff with the new castings. Probably ought to blur this out. It's a little top secret for okay. now. Let's go out in the manufacturing facility. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so where you are now is our manufacturing machine shop, what have you. This is where every cylinder head, intake manifold, oil pan, valve cover gets its final machining process. Perry's going to give you the ins and outs of the whole process for a cylinder head. Awesome. So everything comes in um, in these big foundry boxes. We'll inventory all the parts and put them on the shelves. Here we have, this is actually an LS1 casting. This is gonna be um, our 245 LS1. Uh, it's a real popular seller for the four inch bore. Um, this is our VF3. We call this Op 10, which is the first operation in the entire machining process for the raw castings. Uh, it'll come this in. This is an LS raw this, casting? Th this is, okay. this is our uh, LS1 245. Um, it'll come in and machine these big lugs off the back, uh, kind of square everything up. It'll come in and machine these which are eventually gonna be where the rocker pedestal sits. It'll machine those down to a flat surface. And then these are our secondary lugs, which is where we bolt into the five axis machine to be able to actually port them. So it'll machine these too. When it's in this machine, it sits on a flat plate and we have datum points here. These are cast locators that are as precision as it needs to be sure. as a raw casting. Um, it'll locate off of these points so that we know that the part is always square on our fixture. Now that I've uh, shown you what Op 10 is all about, we're going to take you on to what we call Op 20. That's the second operation on our VF4. Um, you know, we bolt, bolt the cylinder head in, they'll zero it, and when they run the program, it comes in and does things like uh, all the bolt holes get done in here, they get all spot faced, we mill the exhaust face, we final mill the valve cover rail, um, we do the rocker pads, we do the dowels, we do the valve cover bolts. Um, and then of course, we also do the intake flange. Um, in this machine, it gets final milled to size. Uh, we do the intake bolt holes and then we do a little bit of material removal of the intake and exhaust ports both so that you know we're not tearing up our fifth axis machine over there. Uh, and this machine will also rough the combustion chamber in. We'll do a little bit of material removal inside the intake and exhaust bowls and we'll rough machine the seats. It also gets a rough deck in this machine, and this deck surface will stay like this until I finish them later on, right before we get them ready for packaging. So I'm gonna take you on over to the porting machine. This is the, we'll call it the third operation in the process. Um, these are the heads that come out of operation two, which is op 20. Uh, as you can see, they're still machined just like they were over there. Um, we'll get it up in the machine here. And the first order of business, is we'll go ahead and machine the combustion chamber. Uh, so it'll come in, this is final detailed as it'd be on your vehicle. Um, we'll do the seat pockets and we also come in on this machine and do the guide holes. Uh, it'll drill the guide holes first, then it'll ream it. Um, we hold a really tight tolerance on our guide hole because it's really one of the most important parts of your cylinder head. Uh, we do the valve job based off of that. Um, and if you don't have a good guide, you don't have a good head. So we actually, we hand mic every single valve guide hole on all of our cylinder heads. We could just let the machine do it because we know that we have good cutters and we have a rigid setup, but we do take the extra time to actually mic everything just to make sure that all of your, you know, valve guides are going to be in the same size hole and we're not going to have anything funny going on down the road. From there, you'll get a finished ported head and they come into our VMX 60. This is another fifth axis machine. And once the cylinder head is fully ported, 
Um, we'll come in and we'll cut those secondary lugs off that I showed you get machined in the second operation. Um, so we'll cut those off and we actually do the engraving in them. So once it cuts them, it'll finish mill this to a really nice, you know, shine. We'll engrave our name in the end. It comes over onto the exhaust face. It'll finish mill the exhaust face real nice. And then we engrave obviously the model of the head. This happens to be our really popular 305 LS7. And it also comes in and puts the black label in it. All right, Jay, so that's it for this stage. Uh, I'm gonna take you over to the final fit and finish where we actually hand finish all of our black label cylinder heads. Once it comes out of this machine, the guys will take the finished part, uh, which we we say it's an inventory for finishing. Um, they'll put them on these shelves. You can see they're in various stages. These are obviously done. These are waiting to be ported. Um, from there, it comes over to our side where they get hand deburred. Every cylinder head gets deburred by hand. Um, from there, we'll take the cylinder head, we'll put it up in the guide hone. Man, we do a lot of guides in this thing. So we'll actually, we'll ream them. So we have a reamer that we custom made, takes us within like eight tenths of final size. Uh, so we'll ream all the guide holes and then we finish hone them. It's just a simple guide hone. Um, we use all the sun and dial bore gauges. Uh, we have multiples for different stem sizes and stuff like that. Um, and they're all sized off of the valves that we actually run in our heads. Um, we're constantly checking. We like to hold a, really a two tenth tolerance on guides. Like I said earlier, when we were machining the guide holes, it's really one of the most important parts of the cylinder head. I can't stress it enough. It's such a simple part, but without a good guide, you have a really crappy head. Um, so from there, we'll take it out of the guide hole. Once Scott says they're good to go, and he's the best at what he does, he really is. It's kind of crazy. But uh, he'll wash the heads in this, and then he takes them from the Varasol tank. He'll just blow them off with a little bit of water. You know, we have water hooked up with a full drain and everything. And then he'll pressure test each head. So now I'm gonna take you over to the Surti. Uh, this is actually where I rough in every valve job on every head that comes through this shop. Thousands and thousands of valve Ooh, jobs this on machine. this one machine. This bad boy was built in 1989 and it still goes strong. But um, I'll come in and I'll rough everything to size. Uh, I mean, I'll rough it within about 10 thou of final depth. Um, then really once it gets done in this machine, which only takes me, I don't know, two or three minutes max, I'll put it into the new one. Um, I'm actually not machining anything right at the right at the moment because we're right in the middle of a run. But uh, you know, I can come in, and I've made programs, um, you know, for mast LS3 medium bore. Uh, that's what I'm machining right now. Set the machine, and it knows based off of what I tell it where the final depth is supposed to be, and I can sneak up on that a little bit. Um, so I really get it to about. 3 thou above final height, and then um, I can kind of sneak up on it. And once I get a set of intake and exhaust done in one chamber, I can do a run of 50 heads and I never have to change it. The valve jobs are really concentric and since it's a single point cutter, it's a live tool. Um, so it feeds in and out, as you can see, you know, it's doing it while it's running. Um, and since it's all single point, there's zero chatter in this thing. So you get a really, really nice valve job. Uh, something like would be on this. This is where all our finish heads are. Me and Scott just finished this production run. The, these are all final inventory ready to ship to a customer. Um, they're a little bit dirty right now, but as you can see, the valve jobs are super sharp out of that machine. There's no chatter. Everything seals up perfect. Okay, so I've taken you through all of the machining processes, kind of showed you, you know, how we do the fit and finish and all that. And uh, I'm gonna hand you off to Russ now and I'm pretty sure he's got something cool for you. All right, Jay, this is the engine build room. Uh, this is where every Mass Motorsports engine is built. This is gonna be the most exciting part for you. It's where we're gonna put your LS3 black label heads together. Introduce you to Joel. He's gonna handle assembling your cylinder heads today. That's awesome. What's up, Joel? How's it going, Jay? How you doing? Good, man, let's Good. get going, man. Let's get these things started. Hold on, man. You focus on Instagram. I focus on the cylinder heads. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> I didn't know. All right, that's fine. You do what you do, that's fine.